Hi, and welcome to the November edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. I am your host, Pamela Munger, and I'll be taking a look at the latest trends and market conditions within U.S. and global energy and sharing actionable insights powered by Vortex's tracking analytics. In this month's insight, we will focus on the big picture oil demand indicators, which are showing a sign of slowing. China energy demand growth upside for 2024. We'll take a look at what crude stocks are telling us amid Saudi-led OPEC plus cuts and growing crude supply. We'll also take a look at American crude supplies, which are increasingly going to Asia. We'll take a look at how refinery supplies have easily met product demand despite strong refinery maintenance, and we'll take a look at how these flows impact the freight market. Signs of weakness emerge in the overall volatile market, and we can see this first through this chart, which reflects a big picture demand indicator showing import demand for the main transportation fuels in the top 100 ports. Now the top 100 import ports include only ports where 90% of overall flows are imports, which exclude trading hubs like Rotterdam and Singapore. It's based on the second half of 2022 versus the first half of 2023, and intra-country flows are included. It's a unique view, both sides telling us about the same thing, which is that over July through October, demand momentum for gasoline and diesel has slowed by about 100,000 barrels per day versus the seasonal norm compared to first half of 2023. Product imports diverge strongly between basins with the Atlantic Basin at a 32 month low while Pacific Basin remains close to an all time high. In the Atlantic Basin, we are seeing a declining trend for this time after many months of strength during 2022 and the first quarter of this year. However, we notice starting in the spring that West Africa, Europe, and North America more recently are behind this disappointing performance. Now let's move to the Chinese markets, the black box of the year. It looks as if demand momentum in China is slowing. The COVID period peaked in second quarter last year and we observed strong momentum from mid-January 22. Last eight months or so has been a flat line, and these imports on the crude side may have been lifted by stock builds, which means crude imports don't have much upside going into the next year. Refinery runs are likely too high, and we will likely see run cuts. This is partially underpinned by the lack of clean product export quotas granted by the government in Q4. Now on the pet chem side, although demand has been up in the last few years, Asia has also taken advantage of buying cheap Russian NAFTA and cheap LPG. Now the startup of the PDH plants that make and use LPG as feedstock, it's possible that in 2024, it could be lower than what we have seen and that seaborne import growth will slow. As more new capacity comes online, then it will also likely move sideways. And we would not be surprised if the pet cam side shows a further slowdown. Now let's move on to the crude market. On the left-hand side chart, we can see a recent history of OPEC plus activity. The blue shaded area on the right-hand scale are the announced targets. And you can see the blue line showing seaborne exports have moved far less over the last few years compared to the production cuts in the blue shaded area. OPEC supplies in the market are tight at this time, possibly too tight. But last few months, there have been a comeback in these higher exports led by Saudi Arabia. Now the yellow line is probably the most important line because it means how much oil has been arriving into the markets. And over August, Saudi had drawn down its oil at sea. This could not be repeated, however, and we have seen arrivals decline further in September and October. Imports of OPEC plus crude 
have been only 700,000 barrels per day above the COVID period in September through October. Stock draws are coming nevertheless to an end. And as we can see in this inventories chart on the right-hand side, we track inventories for 110 countries around the world, indicated by the light blue area. The second category is floating storage in the dark blue. Both have been drawing consistently in the last few months, indicating a significant tightening of the oil market. Now the yellow area represents the in-transit volumes, which have been changing drastically, underpinned by a steep increase in Saudi exports and strong flows from the Atlantic Basin. On the other hand, we have this weakness on the demand side, as we showed you earlier, declining refining margins and product oversupply, which will have a knock-on effect to the crude market. We think the crude market is clearly weakening. We would not be surprised to see bills start to happen. Now let's turn our attention to the Americas. American crude exports serve as a main marginal supplier, and recently more American supplies moving toward to Asia, outside China, as well as overall Atlantic Basin crudes moving to the east of Suez markets with a rising share from the Gulf of Mexico and West Africa. Now let's take a look at Russian diesel exports and we can see they are returning slowly. Flows to North Africa look steady while imports to Brazil and Turkey decline. Meanwhile, Europe remains well supplied with diesel as we move into the first winter without Russian barrels. And as you can see with a straight red line, more regional supplies are meeting demand, including record flows from Turkey. The Middle East and India are also underpinning strong flows and will continue to do so as the ARB stays open to Europe and refineries returning from a strong maintenance season east of Suez. Now let's take a deeper dive into the grassroots refineries in the Middle East. And as you can see that although refining capacity is increasing, there seems to be a bit of a struggle to produce on-spec product derived from these lower value products, NAFTA and fuel oil exports, which indicate that the secondary units have not yet been optimized in order to produce and export the higher value products, diesel, jet, and to some extent, gasoline. While 2024 may see very little new capacity, we would expect to see these newer refineries optimize the secondary units and therefore put more higher valued products on the water. Further review of the east of Suez markets shows that East Asia's robust refinery runs push the region's refined product exports to a 10 month high, overwhelming markets somewhat with an accelerated clean product export program. And as a result, Latin America West Coast increases clean product imports from Asia backing out barrels from the US Gulf Coast. This could also be due to the Panama Canal congestion to some extent, where we see that overall pad three clean product export momentum slows with an even steeper drop observed in October for flows that move through the Panama Canal. Another impact of the strong refinery Asian runs are the strong Jack Caro imports into the US West Coast as imports surge to the top of the seven-year range amid low Pad 5 refinery run rates and an open ARB from Asia. Meanwhile, on the freight side, long-haul deliveries are binding dirty and clean vessel capacity, but underlying volumes are not growing so far in 2023, indicated by the red line. And now let's take a look at ballast vessels versus laden vessels. And what we can see in the red square is a sign of weak tanker demand because the number of laden and ballast tankers are equal. Whereas in times of strong demand, there are a lot more laden than ballast tankers. When there are a high number of ballast tankers, it indicates a lot of tankers are unemployed. So that the first box is the period of weak tanker demand in the COVID period, whereas the box around July, August, September this year is a result of weak crude tanker demand resulting from the OPEC plus cuts. But in October, that has turned around and the number of laden ballast is diverging again in favor of higher numbers of laden, 
indicating a recovery on the crude markets. Well, that is all we have for the last 2023 edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. I hope you have a great holiday and I'll see you in 2024.